We're now going to talk about scouting for spider mites. We have two species here, the Banks grass mite and the two-spotted spider mite. Our most prevalent species year in, year out is the Banks grass mite, and that is what we have here on this plant. When scouting for the Banks grass mite, look at the lowest leaves on the plant. This is where the colonies become established first, and this is where you begin to see the leaf damage first. This is the underside of a leaf where colonies of the Banks grass mite have infested it. As you can see on the underside of the leaf, the area with the webbing and the mite colonies tends to be a gray color or a lighter green than the normal green of the corn plant. When we reverse this leaf and look at the upper surface, we see the yellowing. And this is very easy to see as one is walking through the field scouting for spider mites. Look for this yellowing on the leaf surface. And uh, if you see this, pull this leaf from the plant and rotate it over and look at the underside for signs of mite colonies. Okay. One reason we are concerned about the Banks grass mite damage is that they do increase stress on the plant. Uh, they are sucking juice from the plant and over time they can cause a desiccation of the leaves. This can severely reduce the yields if the mites are allowed to progress and kill the stalk prematurely. We have observed in some years as much as a 50% yield reduction where plants were killed prematurely by the Banks grass mite. As these mites progress up the plant, so will the damage, and we'll progressively see more and more of this yellowing of the leaves as the, as the mite colonies move up the plant. Typically, we are concerned about mites when they hit about 35% of the lower leaves damaged. If we get past 75% of the lower leaves damage, then we begin to lose significant amounts of yield. Therefore, it's important to keep track of these mites on a regular basis and uh, also scout them for beneficials that would have an impact on controlling the population. Also, water management can have a major impact as to how fast these mites will move up the plant. So when making decisions, talk with the grower to decide what his water management schemes are going to be. This may allow you to delay treatment for spider mites and have an application match up with your southwestern corn borer application. The two-spotted spider mite also damages the plant in a similar manner as the Banks grass mite. But one thing that we didn't notice on the two-spotted spider mite is that it does tend to be more evenly distributed up and down the plant. Therefore, it's not uncommon to find two-spotted spider mites in the center portion of the plant when we have Banks grass mites down on the lower portion of the plant. And after we spray for Banks grass mites with many of the miticides we use, we do kill the Banks grass mites, but we have no impact on the two-spotted spider mite. Therefore, when we walk back out in the field two or three weeks later, we see that the mites are covering the plant from top to bottom, but upon close inspection, we see that all of these mites are the two-spotted spider mite, which is much more difficult to control. The way we tell the difference between the two-spotted spider mite and the Banks grass mite is by the type of damage that is caused on the plant. Typically, the Banks grass mite causes the yellowing of the leaves that you can see from the upper surface. When we have banks, uh, when we have two spotted spider mite colonies on the undersurface of the leaf, we tend to get little specks of uh, what we call stippling of the whole leaf surface, and it looks like tiny little white specks all over the whole leaf. Also, the webbing from the two spotted spider mite tends to be more dense. Also, when we have a curve in a leaf, like from this area to this area, the two-spotted spider mite will bank that area uh, or bridge that area with webbing, whereas the Banks grass mite tends to stay its webbing on right close to the surface of the leaf, and we tend not to have that uh, bridge formed between the folds of the leaf. Um, another way we can tell the difference if you have a hand lens is look at the mite with it, usually a 10x hand lens. The Banks grass mite will have uh, food sacs around the periphery of the body, and it appears that it has three of these on each side, and they are a dark green color. The two-spotted spider mite has the same uh, food sacs inside of the body, but they are toward the uh, 
anterior end of the body and uh, there are two large what looks to be a blackish green spot on each side of the body and toward the back side of the body it is clear and this is one, another way that you will be able to separate these two mites. Often you need to look at the very largest mites you see on the plant. The reason why is because the young Banks grass mites often just have two food sacs on each side of the body and as they mature they begin to get the whole set of sacs around the uh, what we call the periphery of the body. And so do not look at the what we call the immature stages of these mites or you will not be able to determine which species you have. You must look at the adult female.